This sound file contains the spoken word version of a Wikipedia article on a Dyson Sphere. It is recorded by user S. Whistler, and the material was recorded on the 4th of May, 2012. Dyson Sphere, from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia at en.wikipedia.org. Dyson Sphere a Dyson sphere is a hypothetical megastructure originally described by Freeman Dyson. Such a sphere would be a system of orbiting solar power satellites meant to completely encompass a star and capture most or all of its energy output. Dyson speculated that such structures would be the logical consequence of long-term survival and escalating energy needs of a technological civilization and proposed that searching for evidence of the existence of such structures might lead to the detection of an advanced intelligent extraterrestrial life. Since then, other variant degrees involving building an artificial structure or series of structures to encompass a star have been proposed in exploratory engineering or described in science fiction under the name Dyson Sphere. These later proposals have not been limited to solar power stations, Many involve habitation or industrial elements. Most fictional depictions describe a solid shell of matter enclosing a star which is considered the least plausible variant of the idea. Contents 1. Origin of concept 2. Feasibility 3. Variance 4. Search for extraterrestrial intelligence 5. Fiction Origin of concept the concept of the Dyson Sphere was the result of a thought experiment by physicist and mathematician Freeman Dyson, when he theorized that all technological civilizations constantly increased their demand for energy. He reasoned that if our civilization expanded energy demands long enough, there would come a time when it demanded the total energy output of the sun. He proposed a system of orbiting structures which he initially referred to as a shell designed to intercept and collect all energy produced by the sun. Dyson's proposal did not detail how such a system would be constructed, but focused only on issues of energy collection. Dyson is credited with being the first to formalize the concept of the Dyson Sphere in his 1960 paper, Search for Artificial Stellar Sources of Infrared Radiation, published in the journal Science. However, Dyson was not the first to advance this idea. He was inspired by the mention of the concept in the 1937 science fiction novel Star Maker by Olaf Stapledon, and possibly by the works of J.D. Bernal and Raymond Z. Gallen, who seem to have explored similar concepts in their work. Feasibility Some ideas to build a fixed, in-place Dyson sphere are impractical. However, ideas to use orbiting satellites or solar sails employ technology largely already developed. Deployment of spacecraft and satellites using photovoltaics might be seen as the first small steps towards building a Dyson Swarm, see below for differences between these subtypes. However, the number of crafts required to obtain, transmit, and maintain a complete Dyson Sphere far exceeds our present-day industrial capabilities. Variance. In fictional accounts, the Dyson Sphere concept is often interpreted as an artificial hollow sphere of matter around a star. This perception is based on a literal interpretation of Dyson's original short paper introducing the concept. In response to letters prompted by this paper, Dyson replied, A solid shell or ring surrounding a star is mechanically impossible. The form of biosphere which I envisage consists of a loose collection or swarm of objects travelling on independent orbits around the star. Dyson Swarm The variant closest to Dyson's original conception is the Dyson Swarm. It consists of a large number of independent constructs, usually solar power satellites and space habitats, orbiting in a dense formation around the star. This construction approach has advantages. Components could be sized appropriately, and it can be constructed incrementally. 
various forms of wireless energy transfer could be used to transfer energy between components and Earth. Such a swarm is not without drawbacks. The nature of orbital mechanics would make the arrangement of the orbits of the swarm extremely complex. The simplest such arrangement is the Dyson ring, in which all such structures share the same orbit. More complex patterns, with more rings, would intercept more of the star's orbit, but would result in some constructs eclipsing others periodically when their orbits overlap. Another potential problem is the increasing loss of orbital stability when adding more elements increases the probability of orbital perturbations. As noted below, a cloud of collectors would alter the light emitted by the star system. However, the disruption compared to a star's overall natural emitted spectrum would most likely be too small to be noticed on Earth. Dyson Bubble a second type of Dyson sphere is the Dyson bubble. It would be similar to a Dyson swarm composed of many independent constructs, usually solar power satellites and space habitats, and likewise could be constructed incrementally. Unlike the Dyson swarm, the constructs making it up are not in orbit around the star, but would be statites, satellites suspended by use of enormous light sails using radiation pressure to counteract the star's pull of gravity. Such constructs would not be in danger of collision or eclipsing one another. They would be totally stationary with regard to the star and independent of one another. As the ratio of radiation pressure and the force of gravity from a star are constant regardless of the distance, provided the statite has an unobstructed line of sight to the surface of the star, such statites could also vary their distance from their central star. The practicality of this approach is questionable with modern material science, but cannot yet be ruled out. A statite deployed around our own sun would have to have an overall density of 0.78 grams per square meter of sail, to illustrate the low mass of the required materials, consider that the total mass of a bubble of such material, one astronomical unit in radius, would be 2.17 times 10 to the power of 20 kilograms, which is about the same mass as the asteroid Pallas. Such a material is currently beyond our ability to produce. The lightest carbon fiber sail material currently produced has a density, without payload, of 3 grams per meter squared, or about four times as heavy as would be needed to construct a solar statite. However, this could change thanks to the recent creation of ultralight carbon nanotubes, meshed through molecular manufacturing techniques whose densities range from 1.3 grams per meter squared to 1.4 grams per meter squared. By the time a civilization is ready to use this technology, the carbon nanotubes manufacturing might be optimized enough for them to have a density lower than the 0.7 gram per meter squared mark, and the average sail density with rigging might be kept to 0.3 grams per square meter. If such a sail could be constructed at the aerial density, a space habitat the size of the L5 Society's proposed O'Neill cylinder, 500 square kilometers, with room for over 1 million habitats, massing 3 times 10 to the power of 6 tons, could be supported by a circular light sail 3,000 kilometers in diameter, with a combined sail habitat mass of 5.4 times 10 to the power of 9 kilograms. For comparison, this is just slightly smaller than the diameter of Jupiter's moon, Europa, although the sail is a flat disk, not a sphere, or the distance between San Francisco and Kansas City. Such a structure would, however, have a mass quite a lot less than many asteroids. While the construction of such a massive inhabitable statite would be a gigantic undertaking, and the required material science behind it is as yet uncertain, its technical challenges are negligible compared to other engineering feats and required materials proposed in other Dyson Sphere variants. In theory, if enough statites were created and deployed around their star, they would compose a non-rigid version of the Dyson shell mentioned before. Such a shell would not suffer from the drawbacks of massive compression pressure, nor are the mass requirements of such a shell as high as the rigid form. Such a shell would, however, have the same optical and thermal properties as the rigid form, and would be detected by searchers in a similar fashion. Dyson Shell. 
The variant of the Dyson Sphere, most often depicted in fiction, is the Dyson Shell, a uniform, solid shell of matter around the star. Such a structure would completely alter the emissions of the central star and would intercept 100% of the star's energy output. Such a structure would also provide an immense surface, which many envisage being used for habitation if the surface could be made habitable. A spherical Dyson sphere in our solar system, with a radius of one astronomical unit, so that the interior surface would receive the same amount of sunlight as Earth per solid angle, would have a surface area of at least 272 quadrillion square kilometers, or about 550 million times the surface area of the Earth. This would intercept the full 384.6 yottawatts of the Sun's output. Other variant designs would intercept less, but the shell variant represents the maximum possible energy captured for our solar system at this point in the Sun's evolution. This is approximately 33 trillion times the power consumption of humanity in 1998, which was 12 terawatts. There are also several serious theoretical difficulties with the solid shell variant of the Dyson Sphere. Such a shell would have no net gravitational interaction with its englobed sun, and could drift in relation to the central star. If such movements went uncorrected, they could eventually result in a collision between the sphere and the sun, most likely with disastrous results. Such structures would need either some form of propulsion to counteract any drift, or some way to repel the surface of the sphere away from the star. For the same reason, such a shell would have no net gravitational interaction with anything else inside it. The contents of any biosphere placed on the inner surface of a Dyson shell would not be attracted to the sphere's surface and would simply fall into the star. It has been proposed that a biosphere could be contained between two concentric spheres placed on the interior of a rotating sphere or placed on the outside of the sphere where it would be held in place by the star's gravity. In such cases, some form of illumination would have to be devised, or the sphere made at least partly transparent, as the star's light would otherwise be completely hidden. If assuming a radius of one astronomical unit, then the compressive strength of the material forming the sphere would have to be immense. Any arbitrarily selected point on the surface of the sphere can be viewed as being under the pressure of the base of a dome one astronomical unit in height under the sun's gravity at that distance. Indeed, it can be viewed as being at the base of an infinite number of arbitrarily selected domes, but as much of the force from any one arbitrary dome is counteracted by those of another, the net force on that point is immense, but finite. No known or theorized material is strong enough to withstand this pressure and form a rigid static sphere around a star. It has been proposed by Paul Birch in relation to smaller supra-Jupiter constructions around a large planet rather than a star, that it may be possible to support a Dyson shell by dynamic means similar to those used in a space fountain. Masses traveling in circular tracks on the inside of the sphere at velocities significantly greater than orbital velocity would press outwards due to centrifugal force. For a Dyson shell of one astronomical unit radius around a star with the same mass as the Sun, a mass traveling 10 times the orbital velocity, 297.9 kilometers a second, would support 99 times its own mass in additional shell structure. It is unclear how much energy would be consumed ensuring the velocity of the masses was maintained. Also, if assuming a radius of one astronomical unit, then there may not be sufficient building material in the solar system to construct a Dyson shell. Anders Sandberg estimates that there is 1.82 times 10 to the power of 26 kilograms of easily usable building material in the solar system, enough for a one astronomical unit shell with a mass of 600 kilograms per meter squared about 8 to 20 centimeters thick, depending on the density of the material. This includes the hard-to-access cores of the gas giants. The inner planets alone provide only 11.79 times 10 to the power of 24 kilograms, enough for a one astronomical unit shell with a mass of just 42 kilograms per meter squared. 
the shell would be vulnerable to impacts from interstellar bodies, such as comets, meteoroids, and material in interstellar space that is currently being deflected by the sun's bow shock. The heliosphere and any protection it theoretically provides would cease to exist. Other types Another possibility is the Dyson net, a web of cables strung together around the star, which could have power or heat collection units strung between the cables. The Dyson net reduces to a special case of Dyson shell, or bubble, however, depending on how the cables are supported around the sun's gravity. A bubble world is an artificial construct that consists of a shell of living space around a sphere of hydrogen gas. The shell contains air, people, houses, furniture, etc. It was invented to answer the question, what is the largest space colony that can be built? However, most of the volume is not habitable, and there is no power source. Theoretically, any gas giant could be enclosed in a solid shell. At a certain radius, the surface gravity would be terrestrial, and energy could be provided by tapping the thermal energy of the planet. This concept is explored peripherally in the novel Accelerando, and the short story Curator, which is incorporated into the novel as a chapter, by Charles Stross, in which Saturn is converted into a human habitable world. Stellar engines are a class of hypothetical megastructure, whose purpose is to extract useful energy from a star, sometimes for, spe sometimes for specific purposes. For example, Matryoshka brains extract energy for purposes of computation. Shkadov thrusters extract energy for purposes of propulsion. Some of the proposed stellar engine designs are based on the Dyson sphere. A black hole could be the power source instead of a star in order to increase energy to matter conversion efficiency. A black hole would also be smaller than a star. This would decrease communication distances which would be important for computer-based societies as those described above. Search for extraterrestrial intelligence. In Dyson's original paper, he speculated that sufficiently advanced extraterrestrial civilizations would likely follow a similar power consumption pattern as humans, and would eventually build their own spheres of collectors. Constructing such a system would make such a civilization a Type II Kardashev civilization. The existence of such a system of collectors would alter the light emitted from the star system. Collectors would absorb and re-radiate energy from the star. The wavelength of radiation emitted from the collectors would be determined by the emission spectra of the substances making them up, and the temperature of the collectors. Since it seems most likely that these collectors would be made up of heavy elements not normally found in the emission spectra of their central star, or at least not radiating light at such relatively low energies as compared to that that they would be emitting as energetic free nuclei in the stellar atmosphere. There would be atypical wavelengths of light for the star's spectral type in the light spectrum emitted by the star system. If the percentage of the star's output thus filtered or transformed by this absorption and re-radiation was significant, it could be detected at interstellar distances. Given the amount of energy available per square meter at a distance of one astronomical unit from the Sun, it is possible to calculate that most known substances would be re-radiating energy in the infrared part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Thus, a Dyson sphere, constructed by life forms not dissimilar to humans, who dwelled in proximity to a sun-like star, made with materials similar to those available to most humans, would most likely cause an increase in the amount of infrared radiation in the star system's emitted spectrum. Hence, Dyson selected the title, Search for Artificial Stellar Sources of Infrared Radiation, for his published paper. SETI has adopted these assumptions in their search, looking for infrared heavy spectra from solar analogues. As of 2005, Fermilab has an ongoing survey for such spectra by analyzing data from the Infrared Astronomical Satellite, IRAS. Identifying one of the many infrared sources as a Dyson sphere would require improved techniques for discriminating between a Dyson sphere and natural sources. Fermilab discovered 18 potential ambiguous candidates, of which four have been named amusing, but still questionable. Other searches have also resulted in several candidates, which are, however, unconfirmed. Fiction 
As noted above, the Dyson Sphere originated in fiction, and it is a concept that has appeared often in science fiction since then. In fictional accounts, Dyson Spheres are most often depicted as a Dyson Shell, with the gravitational and engineering difficulties of this variant noted above largely ignored. 